Have you ever um, felt like what that song just described of this, this God, where are you? God, why do you seem so distant? Um, God, I, I, I'm going through these times. I'm going through these struggles. I have these anxieties, these worries. God, why are you hanging out in some old violin or wherever you think he might be hanging out for you? I, I, think, I think sometimes that's how it can feel for us when it comes to knowing God, you know? I think, I think all of us here in the room, most of us anyway, I would assume, most of us watching online, we believe in God. You know, we, we know he exists. And if there was a way for us to actually know him, not just know about him, but if there was a way for us to know God, we would want that. You know, I just think most of us, if there is a way for us to experience the love of God more than just sing about it in a song, we would want that. I think for most of us, if there was a way for us to sense God's presence more than just be, you know, encouraged to do that through a message, we would want that. Like if there, if, if there was a way that we could, you know, have this, this supernatural peace that comes from God or a comfort from God, if, if there was a way that God could be more than just information and facts and all that. If we could know God, we would, we would want that. But, but sometimes for you, doesn't that feel like a, a little bit of a hopeless endeavor? Have you ever felt like, you know, maybe you've, you've set aside some time to, you know, spend time with God and, and, and you, you wonder 10, 15 minutes later, did that really accomplish anything? God, were you trying to speak to me? God, were you trying to reveal something to me? I, I read the Bible or I prayed and nothing really happened. I know I've been there myself plenty of times in the past and, and even times still today where, you know, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you. And uh, is anything going on? Is anything happening? God, where, where are you? Why are you hiding? Why do you feel so distant? And I, I think for, for some of us, even if we've been a Christian for a long time, even if we've been doing the church thing for a long time, it almost feels or it can feel impossible to get to know God. And I think because of that, some of us have just given up. You know what? Maybe other people can know God. Maybe, maybe other people experience his presence. But for me, I'm not really sure if this is really working at all. And we just, it feels like it's impossible to know God. Last week, we talked about how cool, how great it would be if we had not just a superpower, but an access to like a spiritual power in our lives. If, if there was spiritual powers that we could have, what would you want and what would it be? And we, we, we kind of talked about this idea that that's the role of the Holy Spirit is to bring these spiritual powers into our lives. In this series, we're just taking a look at a few of what those powers are. And part of the role of the Holy Spirit is he gives us the power to know God. Not just know about God, not just memorize information, but to actually Know the God of the universe, the creator of all, the one who breathes out stars, the beginning and the end, this awesome, magnificent, holy, set-apart God. Through the Holy Spirit, we have the power to know him on a personal, relational sort of level. There's a letter in the New Testament called 1 Corinthians. It's written by a man named Paul, and towards the beginning of this letter, he talks about what he really felt like God called him to do. This, he, was, he was known as an apostle to the Gentiles, which basically just means he, was, he felt this task of spreading the message of Jesus to as many people as he possibly could, starting churches, you know, spreading Christianity sort of thing. And at the beginning of this letter, he talks about sharing this deep mystery of God. This profound secret of God that has been kept hidden for generations and this, this, this you know, this stuff about God that no person could know, no ruler or anything know. And Paul writes these words. He says, this is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Now, most of the times when I hear this verse in, you know, churches or other pastors or whatever, Usually they're talking about heaven and, whoa, it's going to be more beautiful than we can imagine. And, you know, we've never seen streets of gold and, whoa, it's going to be awesome. And, yeah, that's part of it. That's certainly an element to this. But in the context of what Paul is writing in this chapter, 
there's really so much more depth there that, that what he's describing is it's impossible for our human minds to comprehend who God is, his heart, his character, what he's done for us through Jesus, that our, our eyes can't see it, our ears can't hear it, our minds can't really wrap around. We can know facts. We can know Bible verses. People can tell us information. But for us to truly grasp the nature of God and what he's done, man, that's just, that's beyond us. Nobody can just kind of get there on their own. He goes on to keep driving this point home further. He says, no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And haven't you, have you felt like that before? Like you've tried to know God, but you very much identify with these words right here. Man, it seems impossible. God, I'm not sure anybody can know you. How can I know? He says, yeah, that's because nobody can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And that sounds a little demoralizing, a little bit like bad news, but he's just using this as a principle for something that we already know in life. You know, on a a person-to-person level, no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. We get that. We understand that. There's some of you watching online, you're not here in person with the rest of us because you're in a tree right now. Or you were in a tree on Sunday when we had services, you know? And, and I'll tell you, I don't understand your thoughts. I don't get it. You don't make sense to me. I don't, I don't understand the appeal of wanting to wake up early, go out in the cold, in special clothes, and sit in a tree all day waiting for a little furry animal to walk by for me to hunt. It doesn't make sense. I don't get it. I know uh, our founding pastor, Kevin, and I have had conversations about this for the 15 years we've worked together and like, why in the world would you do that? I don't have Kevin's spirit. I don't understand his thoughts. If you're a hunter, man, there's just a disconnect between us, okay? But my guess is there's probably a disconnect between, you know, me too. You don't understand why I have 20 guitars, right? And I could tell you everything I wanted to about how they're different and string gauges and pickups and body and chambers and all these sorts of things, but you just think, you're nuts, man. Why do you need more than one, right? And we we go back and forth. You don't understand my heart. I don't understand your heart. All sorts of different areas. This is true. And Paul says it's the exact same thing with God. No one can know the heart of God, the character of God, his thoughts, his, his whatever about him except God's own spirit. So that's good news, huh? Cool. But here's the thing. This is not all Paul writes. He's just building a case. He's trying to set us up for something. And and what we're going to read next, I think is so amazing. It is so incredible. Uh, If you're here today or you're watching online and you're not sure about Christianity, you're not sure about Jesus, maybe you have questions about the validity of the Bible, what we're going to read in just a moment, I think, should make every one, of us, every one of us want Christianity to be true, even if we're not sure if it's true. Like, like does that make sense? It, it, what, what we're going to read, I'm kind of building the case, if it were at all possible for these next verses to be true, I think we should want it to be true. We should lean in. We should hope, man, I want that in my life. No one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. But here's what Paul says. But it was to us, talking about himself and his companions, but also to any of us who are Christians. It was to us that God revealed these things. What things? The things that no eye has seen, that no ear has heard, that no mind can comprehend. These things to us by his spirit. For his spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets, reveals to us the very character of God in a way that was impossible before. God's Spirit reveals that to us. He goes on to say this, and we have received God's Spirit, not the world's Spirit. Why? So that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. You see, it's it's when we put our faith in, in Jesus or our trust in what Jesus did for us on the cross, that makes us right with God, okay? It is through Jesus that we have access to God. He is the only door. There is no other way to be with God except through Jesus. 
but it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can experience a relationship with God. Do you get the difference? There's being right with God totally and completely through Jesus, and then there is knowing God, experiencing him, growing in this relationship with God that comes through the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit takes these secrets, these mysteries, God's heart, and reveals them to us in a personal way where we can actually begin to know him on a relational sort of level. Think about this. Those of you that are married, a uh, significant other, maybe you're dating somebody right now, whatever it is, how do you know that they love you? How, how do you experience their love? I, I know my wife and I, we've been married for over 16 years now, um, and she does a lot of things to, to try and convey her love to me. You know, She tells me she loves me often. She will text those words to me um, on a regular basis. Uh, she will give me hugs. Uh, it's become just kind of a, a, a routine for us when I take the girls to school in the morning. You know, she just she'll give me a kiss and hey, I love you. She reminds me often that she loves me. More than that, she uh, she has bought me some some incredible gifts over the years. Everything from you know an Apple Watch to a skydiving experience to gift certificates for tattoos. Just she's a great gift giver. Um, she tries to build me up and encourage me as, as a way of her uh, just showing her love. There are certain things around the house that she will just do because she knows I hate them, <laughs> you know, chores or, or stuff like that. But she does them out of her heart to love me. She will, she will do these sorts of things as a way of kind of serving and just displaying her heart. And all of that is great, okay? I'm not trying to downplay any of that. But that's not how I experience her love. That's cool information. I'm glad she does it. But there is a, a, a difference. There, there is a way that I experience her love that is different from all of those. Now, obviously, there's one way that we're not going to talk about here publicly. Uh, that's just between me and her. But the primary way that I experience, where, where it becomes more than just words or a text message, the way that I feel most loved by Casey is when she spends time with me. I've talked about this before. My love language is definitely quality time. When she chooses to spend time with me instead of hanging out with somebody else, instead of doing something else, it doesn't even matter what it is, right? It doesn't even have to be that good of quality. Just as long as we're spending time together, driving in the car together, um, watching TV late at night, sitting by the fireplace, that's how I know that my wife loves me more than anything else. And it's that same sort of thing with God. It's the role, the power of the Holy Spirit to move, you know, the, all of us know God loves us, right? God loves you. Yeah, we hear that all the time. It's almost become cliche at this point. Yep, God loves you. Okay, cool, got that. It's just a fact, you know? One plus one equals two. I'm wearing blue jeans. God loves you. They're all on the same playing field, almost to some of us. But how do we move from just this information or a verse we read or a message we hear, how does that become real? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Romans, Paul writes this. He says, for we know how dearly God loves us. How? Because the Bible says so? That's not what he writes. Because we sing a worship song about God? No. Because we hear a message from somebody on stage? No. We... Here's how we know that we know that we know that God's love is real and we can experience that firsthand because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. To take this information, this God's heart, who he is, and reveal it to us in a powerful, personal, relational sort of way. I know for me, this, this happens often. We, we sing a lot of songs here during our services about God's love or, you know, there's songs that I listen to in the car driving and I'm not typically a very emotional sort of guy. But sometimes when we sing about God's love here or when there's a song that comes on, I find myself just weeping in the presence of God. More than just lyrics, more than just emotions of the music, 
But I actually believe the Holy Spirit is helping me to know the love of God more than just information. We're like, that's, that's planted in me in a certain way. Or there's, there's times where I'm reading the Bible, and, and, and maybe this has happened for you, or maybe you've had other people describe it this way before, where like the words almost pop off the page. There are times where I read the Bible where that doesn't happen. Man, there are some times where I'm reading and like there's a, a, a section of words or a verse that's like, whoa, I can't possibly believe God loves me that much. Again, more than just information, more than knowledge, more than a fact, but this real experience of knowing God. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. That I've asked the Holy Spirit to help bring that power into my life. God, I want to know you more. Holy Spirit, help connect the dots in these sorts of ways. It's, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that, that you and I can better understand the type of relationship that God wants to have with us. It, it, back in a, a little later on in Romans, Paul writes this, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. I think sometimes that's the impression that that people get about Christianity is, okay, well, if you're going to become a Christian, then you're just going to have to obey God. Yes, sir, do what he says. Give your money away, all that sort of stuff. Like, I just got to be a servant of God. No, no, that's, that's not what God's perspective is. We're not to be as fearful slaves, as little obedient, do what I want. Instead, you've received God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, when he adopted you as his own children. Now we can call him through this, the Holy Spirit making this real. Now we can call him Abba, Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to not just inform, but to affirm in the core of our hearts, the core of who we are, that we are God's children. You and I, when we put our trust in what Jesus did for us, we become sons and daughters of God. We become his children. He is our perfect heavenly father we are as children but here's the thing this father child relationship is not like any human one that we've ever had maybe you had a great father growing up maybe you had a horrible father growing up most of us probably somewhere in between this is so much different and better than any of that that god is this relationship is is the healthiest, most perfect, most fulfilling, most intimate, most satisfying, most secure relationship with the God of the universe, not as, whoa, creator, I mean, part of that, but also as father. Paul writes that we can call him Abba, Father. It's the same words that Jesus used when he was praying in the garden. This this term, Abba, it's an Aramaic word that has no direct translation into our English language. There's, there's too much depth and emotion and meaning. We just don't have a word that's exactly like it. But for us, the closest thing that we can come to is something like daddy or papa. That's how God views this relationship with us, and that's how he wants us to view this relationship too. And, and we can't get there on our own, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can know God in that sort of sense, in that sort of of way. I, I think for me, you know, when, when I've got two girls, when they were three, four, five years old, and I'd come home from work, and they'd, they'd run to the door, Daddy, it's good to see you. That's the same way that God wants us to view him. Dad, it's good to be with you. Dad, thanks. I mean, Dad, I'd, let me tell you about my day. Dad, let me do this, this relationship with him where we know God, not just know about him. And so many, you know, so many other things through the Holy Spirit to experience the the patience of God, the peace of God, the comfort of God, just on and on and on. The Holy part of the role of the Holy Spirit, his power in our lives is to help reveal the very heart of God to us. But also the reverse direction as well. Not just God to us, but us to God. In Ephesians, Paul says this, Now all of us can come to the Father, right to his throne, right into his presence, through the Holy Spirit, because of what Christ has done for us. Again, it's it's all because of Jesus. The curtain is open. There's nothing between us and God anymore because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. But it is through the Holy Spirit that we can come to God. It's almost like the Holy Spirit is the conduit 
not only between God and us, but also us and God. And I don't, I can't fully wrap my mind around how this works, but Paul gives an example of what, what this looks like back in Romans. He says this, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we want to connect with God, here's how the Holy Spirit can step in and help. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. You ever been there before? We're like, God, I, I want to talk to you, but I don't know what to say. I want to pray, but I don't know how to start. I'm going through this situation, and I've, you know, I've tried to spend time with you before, but it just feels like nothing's happening. God, I don't know what to pray for. Well, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. I don't know what that sounds like, okay? I don't know how the Holy Spirit prays. I don't know what these groanings are. To me, that's not a big deal. I just trust that's true. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Not only does the Holy Spirit reveal the heart of God down to us, but also connects our heart to God when we just feel like we can't get there on our own. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can know God now, I don't know if you're a, a visual sort of person like I am, but the, these verses that we're reading about the Holy Spirit and know God and reveal secrets, all that sort of stuff, this is kind of how I like to make it make sense in my mind. Way on this side, we've got God's heart. Okay, this is, this is what Paul said no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can comprehend the character of God, the will of God, this plan he's had from the beginning, the relationship he wants with us, his thoughts, his feelings, his attitude, his, the motive of who he is, just the core of God, this, this understanding of God. This is God's heart over here. But way over here is us. This is our heart. And there have been plenty of times where we've experienced this gap in between them. This is who we are, our, our motives, our thoughts, our actions. This is God's heart, but sometimes there's just this disconnect. It feels impossible. Oh God, why have you been hanging out in that old violin sort of idea? This is where the power of the Holy Spirit comes into play. The Holy Spirit, in a sense, is right here in the middle. His job is to connect God's heart to our heart and our heart to God's heart it is the power of the Holy Spirit to bridge this gap. In, in one sense, the Holy Spirit works in this direction to reveal the secrets of God, the thoughts of God, the love of God, the comfort of God, the perspective of God, God's desire to have an Abba Father sort of relationship with us. The Holy Spirit works this way to reveal the very core of God right to our own hearts. But also, the Holy Spirit works in this direction to connect our heart with the very heart of God. And he helps us in our weakness. He prays for us when we don't know what to say. He helps bring our heart. When we don't know how to make it this way, the Holy Spirit steps in and gives us power to connect with our Heavenly Father. He reveals in this direction. He connects in this direction all because that is the power of the Holy Spirit for us so that we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us and that our hearts and God hearts can be connected as one. And here's, here's my question for all of us today, everybody watching online. Would you like this power? Would you like this power in your life to not just learn more information about God, to not just memorize more Bible verses, to not just know the right words to sing at church, but like to actually know God on a personal, relational, nothing between us sort of level? Do you want that? Because that's one of the powers that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. And if you want that, there's only two requirements. Pretty easy ones, but there's two steps. First, we have to be a Christian. 
We have to have put our trust in Jesus Christ to make us right with God. Again, there's no way for any of this to happen if we are still separated from God. It is only through Jesus that all of this is possible. That's step number one, put your trust in Jesus. But step number two is just as simple as asking. Just ask the Holy Spirit to help you know God better. When when we put our trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit already lives within us at that moment. But biblically speaking, we see this, this pattern or this additional step of having to ask or give permission for the Holy Spirit to do his work in us. Jesus said that the Father would give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks. It is no more complicated than that. Just ask. And so that's what we're going to do this morning, is give, give us an opportunity to ask. Now, I want to address those of you who are watching online first. Uh, just because you're not here in person doesn't mean that you can't still be filled with the Spirit and, and receive that power to know God. All you need to do is ask. So I just want to encourage you, before you swipe away from the video, before you click on some other link, just take a moment, ask the Holy Spirit to help you know your Heavenly Father better. We would love if you would leave a comment on this video or send us an email to contact at accesschurchonline.org. We want to be able to help you, maybe offer any assistance that we can. We would love to pray for you, no matter where you're watching from. We, we, we want to come alongside you and help you grow in your relationship with God. But you don't, you don't need anything special. Right where you are, whether you're in the car, at the office, in your house, you can ask the Holy Spirit to give you the power to know your Heavenly Father better. And I want to encourage you to do that.